Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and our channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains in full evolutionary glory. I don't even know what that means, but that's the best I can up with. And today we are going to move on to the next era in the Earth's history. As part of the Proterozoic Eon, it is known as the Meso-Proterozoic. Let's do it. Like I said when I ended the last video, the Meso-Proterozoic is right smack dab in the middle of what's known as the Boring Billion. Scientists call it that because, frankly, there just wasn't a lot going on. For the first time in Earth's history, things had really genuinely stabilized. Life on the planet remained pretty much the same since life had been forced to evolve from anaerobic to aerobic to take advantage of the oxygen in the atmosphere rather than be killed by it. The newly evolved eukaryotes just kind of bumbled around for the next billion years or so, not really doing a whole heck of a lot as far as we know beyond just vibing. But it wasn't like there was nothing happening during this time, it just wasn't a lot. The beginning of the Mesoproterozoic era is marked mostly by the breakup of the Columbia supercontinent. And later in the same era, a new supercontinent known as Rodinia would be formed. Again, neither of these are Pangaea. I feel the need to reinforce that because every time someone mentions a supercontinent, they think Pangaea. And some people think that's the only one. And it's not. The continents have been arranged in many different forms over the course of the billions of years the Earth has existed, and these are just two of them. What's interesting about this, though, is that the continents started looking like they do now. Based on the data we've been able to find, it seems that Rodinia was made up of shapes that would actually be recognizable as the continents as we know them in the present day. The tectonic movements, of course, started causing mountain building all over the world, and many signs of it can be found in Africa, Antarctica, Europe, and North America. While the eukaryotes really were just vibing, it seems they themselves got bored because this era would mark the first evidence we have of what we know as sexual reproduction. Up until that point, the single-celled life on the planet had only reproduced asexually. The difference there is that asexual reproduction generally only results in an offspring that inherits all genetic traits from the parent organism. This means that there's no mishmash of genetic data, and that there's no errors or mutations in the process, the offspring will be effectively identical to the parent cell. Prokaryotes can only reproduce in this manner. There's more complexity to it because they can alter their genes to a certain extent, but for the most part, they generally just clone themselves. But sexual reproduction is an evolution of this. While it's weakened by the fact that it takes two parents, and they only would be able to pass on half of their genetic codes, the benefit here is that the codes would be mishmashed together, resulting in an offspring that is not identical to either parent. This new type of reproduction that eukaryotes started doing would help push the process of evolution to a much faster rate. Certain different traits would be combined or phased out as individuals didn't survive long enough to procreate, and species began to change much more quickly. As I'm sure at least a few of you know, sexual reproduction is the dominant form of reproduction when it comes to most species on our planet today, including us. And it was these early eukaryotes that first started doing this, changing the way species would evolve forever. And eventually, sometime very soon, geologically speaking, some of the eukaryotes would decide they didn't want to be only one cell anymore. But that's a story for the next era. Until then, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.